In the last video, we had a function, we determined that it was one-to-one, -one, and then using key points from that, we were able to graph its inverse. And like I said before, that's not always the best way of finding the inverse. Here we have a nice algebraic way of finding the inverse. The first step is to rewrite the function notation as y. Then you're going to swap the x's with the y's and the y's with the x's. That's what I keep harping on. y becomes x, x becomes y. Once you do that, solve that new equation for y. And once you have y by itself, rewrite that y as f inverse of x. So the example that we had before, when we were dealing with the graphs, we had f of x was equal to the cube root of x plus 2. So let's go through this pro let's go through this process and see if we can find the inverse and see if the algebra gives us the same inverse as what we got from just the graph. So the first step here is to rewrite f of x as y. So that means y equals the cube root of x plus 2. And then it says replace x with y and y with x. So I'm going to go into a different color. Uh, I'm going to use the blue. Hopefully that's going to be uh, able to be seen by you guys. So instead of y, I'm going to write x. And instead of x, I'm going to write y. And so from here, now that I've made those replacements and x becomes y, y becomes x, I'm going to solve this equation for y. All right, so here's the only place I have y, so I need to subtract the 2 first. All right, so x minus 2 equals the cube root of y. To undo the cube root, we're going to raise both sides to the third power. Now understand, you're raising both sides. So this whole group needs to be raised to the third power. Do not expand this. Leave it as it is, x minus 2 to the third power is equal to y. And then the final step that we have is to rewrite this. So instead of saying y, we are just going to say f inverse. So I'm just going to put over here on the left side as well. So f inverse of x is equal to x minus 2 to the third. And if you look at what we just had on the graphs, that's what we came up with for our inverse, just by looking at the graphs. Now, I want you to see another way of doing this. And what I'm going to show you requires you to understand how the order of operations works. Now, this is not something that we can do for every function that's one-to-one -one in finding its inverse. But here's a neat little trick if you can just follow along with me for just a second. If you imagine here for this function, you start with x. Now I want you to think about what you do. Once you plug in x, the very first thing that you do is that you have to do the cube root of that, and then you have to add 2. That's how the order of operations are going to work. Okay? You do the cube root, you add 2. Now we're trying to find the inverse. Now remember what the inverse does. The inverse is going to undo everything, and it does it in a backwards order. So, if I start with x over here for my inverse, and I'm going to go backwards now. The inverse of adding 2 is subtracting 2. Follow the arrow. Go backwards. The inverse of cube rooting something is to raise something to the third power. Okay, these are the steps that we're taking. And even over here, you saw us take these steps. Well, I didn't write the minus 2 under here, but I guess I can do that right now, right? Subtract 2 on both sides. So if I want to write my inverse, this is what I like to do. I start with x, and then I follow the arrows. What do I do? I subtract 2, and once I'm done subtracting 2, follow the arrow, I then raise everything to the third power. And you see, that's the same thing that we got by doing all the algebraic steps here. But again, if you can follow the order of operations, you just have to do that order backwards with the inverse steps. It's a lot like the difference between getting dressed in the morning and getting undressed in the afternoon. When I get dressed in the morning, I put on my socks and then I put on my shoes. But when I get undressed, I take off my shoes, I take off my socks. So I do it in a 
the backwards order, and instead of putting them on, I take them off. So it's a it's the opposite operation, inverse operation, and the backwards order. That that's what you do. That's an inverse operation. So let's take a look at this next example. So find the inverse. Find the inverse of f of x is equal to 7x plus 5 divided by 4. Now we're going to do it the easy way and we're going to do it the other easy way. Okay. So the first way that we're going to do this is with the steps that we have written at the top of this page. So that means the first thing that I do is that instead of writing f of x, I'm going to say y equals 7x plus 5 all over 4. Okay, that's the first step. The second step says rewrite the x's as y's and rewrite the y's as x's. Okay, so that means this becomes x is equal to 7, x becomes y, plus 5, and this is all divided by 4. All right, the first step of rewriting f of x is y, easy. Uh, rewriting x is y and y is x, easy. You haven't even done anything. Now this is where you take those steps to get y by itself. So here is y up here, all by himself. Well, he's not by himself. We're going to get him by himself. The first thing we're going to do is, let's see, you don't want to mess with the 7 or the 5, but you want to mess with the thing, you want to get rid of the thing that's affecting everybody, and that's the 4. The 4 is the denominator for the entire right side. So I'm going to undo that with the inverse operation. So instead of dividing by 4, multiply times 4. And we do that on both sides. All right, so now we have 4x is equal to 7y plus 5, because those guys reduce. The next step for getting y by itself is to subtract the 5. So subtract 5 on both sides, so the guy's got to go away. So 4x minus 5 equals 7y. We are one step away from getting y by itself. We just need to divide both sides by 7, like that. And so now we have, let's put the y on the left side, y equals 4x minus 5 divided by 7. Okay, so we exchange the x for y and the y for x. Solve for y by undoing these steps one at a time. And now that we're down here, we rewrite y using the inverse function notation, like this. So this is your inverse function. Now that was the easy way. Let me show you the other easy way. All right, so instead of going horizontally, let me do this trick vertically. You're starting with x. Talk about what it is that you're doing if you were to plug a number into this function. What it, what's the order of operations? What does that say? So if I were to plug, say, the number 2 in here, What's the first thing you do if you plug in 2? Well, you wouldn't add 5, you wouldn't divide by 4, you multiply times 7 first. So the first thing you do is multiply times 7. After you multiply times 7, the next step would be to add the 5, and then once you've added the 5, you would then divide your answer by 4. That's what the function says to do if you follow the order of operations. Again, if I just play around and I just plug a 2 in there, you do 7 times 2, take that result plus 5, take that result, divide by 4. Let's see what the inverse says. So the inverse is going to go backwards. Okay? So if you start with x, what do you do first? Well, you have to undo division by 4, so that means you multiply times 4. And then, instead of adding 5, you do the inverse, which is subtracting 5. And then, 
you do the inverse of multiplying times 7, so let's divide by 7. So this is the step. These are the, this is the pattern that you take to find the inverse. So if I follow this, my inverse function would be this. I'm starting with x. And what do I do first? I multiply that times 4, so that's going to be 4x. And I'm going to subtract 5 from that expression, so 4x minus 5. And then I have to divide the whole thing by 7. Divide that whole expression by 7. And there's your inverse, right? You've got the easy way, and then you've got the easy way. You just have to choose.